we've got cracks here. So you can see we've got cracks here. We've got, I don't know what this is, whether it's been filled before. But uh, big scratches underneath here. Uh, another here where it's hit a, um, a hidden pole in grass. Little dents along here. Some are worse than others. Another deep scratch here. Big one. Another scratch here. Surface scratches here. And that's basically it. So in this video we're going to repair this bumper so it looks maybe not as good as new because it is pretty badly damaged but hopefully something close to new. I'll just take you through the process that we're going to go through with this video. One thing I would say before we start is this, this bumper is in a very bad condition and I probably wouldn't recommend uh, repairing it if you can get the bumper from a body shop, a shop that sells body panels. Plastic bumpers are generally very cheap. You can pick them up, I think, from you know 30 euro up to 100 euro. So if that's an option to you and your bumper is in a very bad state, I would definitely recommend doing that and not going, not doing what I'm going to do to this bumper. The reason I'm going to go into this bumper is because this bumper is of a Primera GT. Um, these cars, the last model of the car, I think, was 2000, 2001, so 17 years ago. Plus it's a GT which had different bumpers to all the other Primeras. Long story short, I can't find this bumper in a new condition. So let's have a look at it now we've got it on a stand. First of all, apologies for my uh, makeshift uh, body shop, paint room, uh, paint booth, whatever you want to call it. So apologies for that in advance. But let's get into the bumper. So the bottom edge of the bumper, this is the front bottom edge, is very, um, very marked, grooved got gouges out of it. I'm not going to be going too crazy with this. I think what I'm going to do is just sand this down until it's smooth and then just paint over that for the parts that are basically just scratched. Um, obviously I'm going to take off all the accessories off the, uh, off the bumper, so number plate. Um, I've got some uh, blocking uh, channels here. This got some uh, leads I put on back in the day when the leads were the latest and greatest thing. So these are going to be coming off. I'll probably just take the leads off these and just put the blanking panels back. Um, I'm thinking I'm probably going to spray them black, re-spray them and then put a gloss coat on them so they look a bit nicer. So all that's going to be coming off. Number plate and these are going to be coming off. This is actually part of the bumper and it looks like someone's actually repaired this bumper before. Um, you can see that the paint uh, comes in on the black plastic. So I'll be masking this off and I know I'll just probably clean this, uh, mask it off and then spray all around it. So let's go from one side of the bumper to the other. I know we did this on the car but let's just go into a bit more detail now we can see it a bit more clearly. So these, these things were in what I've just covered but what I didn't notice was that it's quite badly bent here it should be flat if we can just look at the other side it's uh, basically a flat surface here and this is uh, quite badly bent in we can see that this is this bumper should be coming up sort of like that so this is going to take um, some heat. So what I'm going to do, well the plan is, I'm not sure how it's going to work, I've never done something that's this badly kinked before, just heat up this whole area and when, I'm just going to try and push it back um, back to how it was. The same thing here, like the whole bumper here needs to come up, this crack needs to be repaired. Um, same here, I'm just going to use heat here and try and bend this back as best I can. So guys, probably now is a good time to mention that I'm not a professional. This is something I'm doing DIY. This is just the way I do it. This is what works for me, hopefully, fingers crossed. So I've just gone across it with a wet uh, toilet tissue just to get the worst of the dirt off. Now I'm just going to have a normal cloth sponge and then just uh, wipe off the uh, remaining dirt on the one side. I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. So that's the other side done. 
like I said, just lay, cut the square of mesh to the size that I want it, lay the mesh up. While I'm holding it, just push the soldering iron to push the plastic, push the metal into the plastic. And that is how it uh, stays there. So I'll just do one on the corner just to show you. And then you can see where it's gone black. So that mesh is now in the bumper. Do that in like in 20 different spots or however many you need just to get the mesh nice and solid. And then get the, uh, get the plastic stick wherever it's gone that I use it all. Okay. Get the plastic stick and then lay it on top of the, uh, lay it on top of the mesh, melt it. Once you've got it all melted, just work it around the uh, mesh until everything is, you know, everything has gone into the mesh. So you get a nice solid connection there. And then we'll come on to this part and we'll try and sort this out. So this is kinked here. This should be flat, but there's actually a bend in it. So I'm thinking if we come around from the bottom, you can see that it's kinked out here badly. So what we're going to try and do is heat this area up and push it in from uh, this direction and then hopefully this will push this out as well. So for the heating I'm going to use a tool that's not ideal for the job but nevertheless I think it's going to work. It is a, a desoldering tool. Basically there's a hot element in this. It blows hot air out of here. It's adjustable. I can set the temperature for what I needed. I'm going to set it at you know, a relatively high temperature. This, um, I think it's better than what it was before. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect. But um, I'm kind of happy with this area now. This can all be filled kind of flush. I can get the angle back with a filler. Um, I pushed this out slightly. I'm not sure if that's going to be noticeable. But I don't want to push it out too far. I'd rather sh you know, put filler there because I can always take the filler down to make it flush after. But I just wanted to, you know, get it in some sort of shape. And the next step now is to uh, heat this area up here. And I'll try and uh, get this to go back in so it's all sort of one piece. I'm going to heat it again from this side. Heat this area here. And then try to get them to go, um, you know, flush with each other. Okay, so I've heated the area up and I've managed to get them back to some kind of normality. This is a bit lower, but again, this is going to be filled back into a curve. It's probably like this whole area here is a bit lower. So it's going to be quite a lot of filler, but I've got filler for the job, specifically for polyurethane. So I'm not too worried about that. So yeah, I'm quite happy with the way that's come out. I've got this little bit that sticks out here, but this is going to get sanded down. Piece. This is at the bottom of the bumper here. So would, again, just heat this area up, push this in, push this side in, and push it from the inside down a little bit. So that's that heated. Again, it's not perfect, but I think it is better than what it was. So uh, less, a lot less work to do with the filler. Um, the bottom of it, again, this is not going to be seen, obviously, but I think we can put some filler in here and make it relatively smooth. There's always going to be a bump here, I think, on this edge, but not a lot I can do about that without going into major surgery. So if I can give a quick overview of what my plan is with the sanding, um, I'll start off with something really rough, like a, like a 60 or an 80 grit just to go over these high spots in the plastic. I want to sand this plastic down smooth. So anywhere with this big gouge is here, here, there's bits of edges missing. Here, there's edges missing. It's a big gouge, it's um, up above. It's not flush with the plastic. So I'm just going to get 80 grit, go over all these rough areas and get all the plastic down, at least to the same level as the rest of the bumper. And then we're just going to scratch all this filler out. I had a quick scratch around with the screwdriver and I think the filler that's already on the bumper it's very strong bond it's not flaking off at all so I'm just going to leave it as it is and just sand over with the 80 grit like I said. I've gone round and I've done the uh, sanding so basically what I've done is I've gone round all the loose rough bits that I showed earlier the bits that were scuffed up underneath the bumper just going around all the bad stuff with like an 80 grit 
sandpaper. I've got it all basically as good as it's going to get. There's, well, minimal high spots. If there are high spots, I'll deal with that later, but basically the majority of the high spots have done. It's quite a smooth surface now around the outside. Uh, so as I've gone round, there are bits that are, are worse than what I thought. This, for example, I'm going to have to sand quite a bit of plastic off this. You can see what this is like when I finish with the, with the uh, 80 grit sandpaper. And what I've come to the conclusion is that I think I'm basically going to have to um, fill the entire bumper because these stone chips on the front, you know, they've made indentations into the plastic. So I'm going to have to put some filler on that to make it completely smooth. Here, I'm going to have to put filler to make it completely smooth. Here, along the sides here, this is very dimply, if you like. And my biggest concern at the moment is there won't be enough stock of plastic filler in Europe for me to finish this job. Um, I've wiped it down now to try to get it as clean as possible with a dry rag first of all, and then I've gone over it with a wet rag and a microfiber cloth just to get the remaining dust off. I want to get a uh, very good base for the filler that I'm going to put on in the next step. So that's what I'm going to do now. Put the, I'm going to put skim this, skim this, fill this, skim all this here. Uh, fill this part, fill that crack, uh, fill all these gouges here. Um, I'll probably fill this on the back side as well, why not? Fill all these gouges down here, skim this for all the small holes, skim in here. Fill all this here, fill this crack, fill all this, skim down here, skim this crack here. It's a lot of, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of filling. So this is probably the start of many uh, filling episodes, but this is the first one. It's altogether it's about two golf balls worth of uh, filler. I'll try and keep it out of this groove if I can at all possible. There's no real reason for me to go into this groove if I can. Um, I mean, it is. It is. Uh, it has got dimples in it. I'm not saying no to that, but uh, it is a bit of a pain in the ass later to um, to sand that groove and to keep it looking uh, normal. And I'll just continue this for the for the rest of the bumper. So these bits here, this bit here is you know this whole area is quite sunk in. So I'm just going to be very liberal. Put a load of uh, a filler here. This is the first run, if you like, the first coat of uh, filler. Like I said, I'm not too concerned about it, you know, being a bit lumpy here. The precision is going to come on the second coat. But sand it down. I'm going to use a cork block and uh, the sandpaper wrapped around it, obviously. And I'm just going to go over this, apply light pressure, just to get the uh, the curve to get the shape back to the bumper. The first layer of uh, filler with a uh, sandpaper like i said 90 90 grit just to get the bulk of it off i'm just going to cross the bumper now just with my fingers feeling for the high spots the low spots where i need to take where i need to sand the filler more and where i need to fill in where i need to fill in i just draw a shape around it like that to show where it needs to be filled and the high points i'm just putting x's uh, where it needs to come down a little bit more So this is the second coat of uh, primer sanded now. We're getting close. Uh, more or less, m most of the bumper is, uh, you know, pretty good, like 90% of the way there. I'll still go over it one more time just to do the uh, marks as well for the sanding. But generally, it seems pretty, we're pretty close, I think, to uh, approaching the point of primer in. This corner here is taking a lot more primer than what I thought. Uh, probably would have been better to try and push it out with heat at the start, but you live and you learn. Hopefully this is going to be enough now to sand down. For sure it's going to need an extra coat just to finish it off. Okay guys, finished up with the uh, sanding of the bumper now. It's got it pretty smooth everywhere. The We're going to do the filling now, the first coat anyway 
of a plastic primer. There's a bit of filler in it as well, so hopefully it's going to fill up all these small um, pinholes if there are any in the filler. Also, what it's going to do is expose any imperfections in the bumper which are not which I've missed basically. So on the bumper we've got these black plastic inserts that go next to the fog lights. I could spray these, but I don't have any black spray paint and I don't really fancy buying a can of paint just for this small area. So what I'm going to use is a permanent marker. I'm just going to go over it and uh, you know put it, you know, obviously just colour it in black. confession to make here I used a, a, a 1k supposed to be multi plastic primer whatever that is <clears throat> on the bumper but it turns out it's clear it is the product that the uh, body shop recommended I use but it's the problem is it's clear so when I put the primer on I'm used to uh, it basically the filling primer when you put it on it exposes any anything that's not 100% smooth on the bumper and obviously if it's clear it doesn't tell you anything so I'm gonna go against the recommendation of the uh, of the body shop accessory supplier I'm gonna just put normal 1k uh, filling primer on it guys okay, so I said at the start of the sanding process always 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 use a sanding block when you're doing uh, when you're sanding because you, if you're using your fingers, you're going to get grooves in it, which are going to come, which are going to be obvious when it comes to uh, paint the bumper. But there are some exceptions where I will use my fingers, and basically it's cheating, if you like, call it a shortcut, call it bodge, whatever you want. So in some places, there is a, like a, there's a small area here. I can feel that there's a bit of a ding here. Well, ding. It's a it's a low spot. Now if I'm going to sand this down with a block. I'm going to take a load of this off here, I'm going to take a load of this off here, mostly from the bumper, just to get everything down to the level of this small imperfection here. So in these circumstances, when it's very isolated, I'm just going to use my thumb here in a circular motion, just to take the edge off the filler. And I'm relatively happy with where it is at the moment. But the uh, the filling primer, when I put that on, that's going to me. That's going to expose all the uh, small imperfections that I've missed. So primer, moment of truth, guys. So this is where we find out how good the sanding job on this bumper was, and uh, how clean I got the bumper also with the uh, with the uh, microfiber towel. I think it's pretty clean, but we're going to find out. So. It says shake it very well. In my experience, guys, shake it as much as you can. The warmer the can is, up to a point, I mean, get it, you know, 20 Celsius, 25 Celsius. Shake it a lot. The finish is much better. It's definitely worth the effort of giving it a good shake before you start. Let's give it a quick test. Okay. So... You know, you find the uh, distance that you want. It'll go on quite thick, the uh, fill-in primer, and you don't really need to worry about it running too much. I'm thinking I'll put two coats on this bumper. Doesn't have to be totally uniform with the first coat, but I like to get it, you know, relatively close to uniform color. And the, the thicker I put it on, I find I can see where the imperfections are in the sanding and the bumper, the contours and what have you, rather than finding that out on the second coat. So I do, like I said, I do like to go quite thick on the first coat. Okay guys, so we put the first coat of primer on. I'm, I'm gonna go around the bumper. I'm gonna just see where we've got issues. Hopefully, not many. 
So first of all, I can see that there's a, a spot here. Um, this has not been perfect here. Um, we've got a few things here. I think it's too late to do anything about these, so I'm going to live with that. Um, the front lip here is okay. See, it's highlighted where I've missed a bit here of the filler, so I'm going to have to go over this. So depending on how bad it is, it depends what sandpaper I'm going to use. So for this... So for this one, for example, here, I don't know if it's going to come out on camera, guys, but this is a little bit rough. So I think sort of like a thousand sandpaper, a thousand grit is going to be enough to smooth that off. Likewise here, 1,000 grit, just to smooth it. Um, these bits here, they're, they're a bit more involved, use like a 240 here. I can see that there's a big bit I've missed here, so this is going to be a 240 here. Smooth this off. And so on and so forth. I'm going to go across the bumper and just, you know, work out what sandpapers I need, what grits. But this is why, it's well, for me at least, this is why I find it important to have, you know, a grey filling primer or a, at least a grey primer because it does highlight all these areas that I've missed. So here's the 12 under. We're going to start with this area here. You can see it's a bit rough. This is not, a, because the area is quite large where we need to sand down, I'm going to use a sanding block for sure. I don't want any extra grooves in this. Come round to this side where we've got this big lip here. Okay, just get the 240 on it. Again, just with the edge of the block, circular motion. And, uh, and uh, come back to you when it's uh, when it's finished. Okay, guys. Now we're coming on to the uh, painting of the bumper. One thing I'd say about the whole process is to get good quality um, microfiber cloths. These things can work miracles, microfiber cloths. So, you know, personally, I get them from eBay. They're a blue and white. They cost around three dollars each, which means seem a lot for a microfiber cloth. But they're nice and thick. They're a genuine microfiber, and they do work miracles with regards to wiping stuff down. They take. They keep everything in the cloth, which makes your life much easier. On to the painting. So I use, personally, I use a 50 litre compressor. This is the gun I use. From what I see, this is from a shop called uh, Leroy Merlin. Basically, all the paint guns seem to be the same. Uh, on, I'll just take you through some of the settings on this gun. So we've got this knob here at the front, controls the amount of air that goes through the gun. And then we've got this one at the back, which controls the amount of paint. So adjust these to whatever you feel is uh, right. Personally, I like to put less paint. Better to have too little paint going through the gun than too much, in my opinion. I'll put a link at the, uh, in the video description to some uh, YouTube channels, which, in my opinion, have good videos with regards to how to paint spray professionally. So I've got the paint made up. Uh, I just go to a uh, place that does uh, automat or automotive body supplies. And they've mixed me up a, a litre of uh, paint, which is here. It's much cheaper than going for cans. Don't get me wrong, I've got nothing against spray painting with a can. I think you can get factory finish with a spray can. The only thing is, you have to have uh, strong hands, because you'll be push pushing the button for a long time. And second of all, it, they're expensive, can get expensive. For this bumper, I would anticipate, I'd probably go through four cans of paint spray to do this uh, bumper, maybe five. So I'm just gonna spray it on the wall, uh, just so I know what the uh, spray pattern's gonna be like. I'm gonna, I'll put the fan on in there so you're not gonna be able to hear anything, but. I just want to see what sort of coverage it's giving before I hit it on the bumper. So that looks alright as it is. So, obviously that's the first 
that's the first coat on. I'll give it sort of five minutes, nothing crazy, it's probably dry already. And then I'm just going to go over it, see if there's any major issues that I haven't uh, seen on the bumper, any major imperfections. It's going to have to be pretty major now for me to start refinishing this bumper. I'm pretty in depth, but nevertheless, leave it dry for five minutes, come back to it, have a quick once over, and assuming everything is kind of acceptable, then I'll hit it with probably two more coats of paint. Like I said, I'll just go around and uh, check it now. can see that there's something in the paint here. Okay, so we can brush that off. I can still see there's some scratches here in the paint, but hopefully, I'm not gonna do anything now. I'll just put extra paint on it and then hopefully it will cover that up to some extent anyway. The rest of it looks okay here. This is okay, still got some scratches here, but again, I'll live with them, try and cover it up with the extra coats of paint. You know, this is the big damaged area. Uh, it looks reasonable, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's 90% of the job anyway. So I'll live with that. So generally, I'm happy with how it's come out, the first coat. So that's the second coat on. Don't ask me where this dust comes from, guys. I've got no idea. The good thing about putting thin coats in, whatever's stuck in the paint, hopefully the plant, you know, they can come out. You can brush them off with your finger after it's a little bit dry. That's the idea, anyway. Um, before I put this uh, third coat on, but generally, yeah, I'm happy. I'm satisfied with how it's coming out at the moment. This is the microfiber I was talking about. It comes, you know, folded in the packet. This is the packet it comes in. It says Marflow Microfiber Supreme. Honestly, I can't recommend this product highly enough. These microfibers are fantastic. I've had Maguire's microfibers in the past, but these are much thicker, uh, hold a lot more stuff, and you know, basically they work miracles. So I'll go with the blue side first, the most dirty side, and then the, when it's supposed to be clean, use the yellow side, because it's obviously the dirt will show up better on bumper now I'll probably do one more just for the sake of it okay guys so this is the clear coat it's um, what is it it's a clear clear with a hardener separate hardener and then some thinner the uh, paint supply place I got all this from gave me a little mixing tub to go with it. So when you mix in 800, when you mix in 100 milliliters, you put A, which is the clear to there, the uh, hardener to, which is B, you fill it to there, and then you put 10% thinner in it. And that is it, then mix it together, put it in the gun, you're good to go. Evil stuff, so I can't do it in one go. The fan is not enough, it gets a bit full in here. So I'm just into my uh, second, there's still some left in it, so I'll just finish off this and then wait for it to dry for another. I'll probably give the clear coat five to ten minutes between coats. the coat of varnish on guys and it's come out relatively decent I'm happy with it with regards to contamination on it eh, I think it's better than the paint to be honest I don't really see anything of any significance on it so it's tack dry now so it's time I'm gonna put the other coat on 
Uh, I'm not sure how many coats I'm going to do. I think maybe I'll just put two on it. That seems enough. Uh, because I am putting quite a lot on with each coat. I've got to, got to mix three, I've got to mix 100 milliliters at a time because that is the uh, measuring marks that I get with the thing. If I'd add a 50, I'd probably do 50, but. So this is the process finished guys, uh, just put the three coats of uh, lacquer on and uh, put it back on the car and this is what it looks like. The perfect is not, this finish is not great, The um, it needs a bit of sand and there's a bit of orange peel with it, you can see it here, it's a bit of orange peel. I, done, I put some sandpaper on it, like some 1200 grit, if you can come up and see it, how it comes out, it comes out a bit um, cloudy if you like, the uh, 1200 grit. It's been on it for a few days now. Um, I just want to put some polish on this now just to see if it takes out this uh, cloudiness. I've got some cutting compound. I've just put it on the cloth like so. And I, like I said, I just want to see if it takes off this uh, cloudy area here. Cutting compound's done an okay job, I suppose. So we'll see if um, Turtle Wax Original does a better job, i.e. Uh, takes the scratches out easier. Yeah, and that takes it back to a right, that takes it back to a gloss, the uh, turtle wax. Like so. So if I was bothered to get rid of the um, orange peel, I'd, um, um, go over it with 2000 grit just to smooth it down but honestly I'm not bothered about the orange peel personally for this car at the moment I think it's fine to have the orange peel on it but I'll just go around the bumper now with the uh, uh, the uh, turtle wax just to get rid of all the um, the little imperfections that I've seen the uh, where I've sanded this the cloudy bits and that'll be it job done. As always, uh, thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, if you if you are a subscriber already, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate all my subscribers. Uh, if you're not a subscriber and you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, that's it for now. Look after yourself and I'll see you again next time.